Hey guys, if you've been following my loudspeaker trip, I'll link it above, you'll know that last video left me insanely happy while being so completely disappointed at the same time. Sometimes we solve one problem while creating a whole other one for ourselves, and I guess that's just the way things are on my little audio gerbil wheel. So here you are. How you doing? Possibly researching your next DAC purchase. Maybe you've got some questions or have uncertainties. I can help with that. This vid serves as my experience with a company called Denifrips. Roll the intro. Before we begin, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Chibs, and I review stuff that gets me fired up. Lately, it's all been hi-fi related, and I have a lot to unpack here. Everything we talk about today is my own experience and not influenced or sponsored in any way. Now, they manufacture a really well-regarded line of DAC, stretching from the more affordable Ares 2 all the way to the top-end Terminator Plus. I'm going to be focusing on the middle letters today. This is the story of how I went from Pontus right into Venus. Before we get into that, let's roll things back with my introduction to R2R DACs. Now, in the before time, I had owned a Gashelli Enog, an RME ADI2 DAC, and a Gusterd X16. But I got curious. Does R2R deserve all that hype it was getting? And what's the difference? So what's the difference between a regular chip DAC and an R2R DAC? I'm going to give you guys a quick description here, but leave links to Hans Beekhausen's, among others, should you really want to get in the weeds and learn more. A chip DAC, also referred to as a Delta Sigma DAC, is an off-the-shelf chip manufactured by companies such as AKM, ESS, Burr Brown, with a dedicated pre-programmed silicone chip. One major benefit to a Delta Sigma or DS DAC is they can be manufactured in bulk for cheap and fit inside small enclosures like a dongle. With a DS DAC, the signal goes through a significant number of conversions and gets processed by said silicone chip. R2R ladder DACs rely on a series of precision resistors turned on by precision switches to decode the audio signal. This audio signal does not go through as much conversion as it would with a Delta Sigma DAC. So the DAC looks at the amplitude that the signal says that the sound should be at. Based on that amplitude, it turns on the appropriate amount of resistors to allow for more or less voltage to go through. R2R ladder technology is said to be a more pure approach to decoding the digital signal because it doesn't need to go through all of this conversion. This comes at a cost though, quite literally, because their construction is much more involved, expensive, and time consuming. Just for example, each resistor Danifribs uses needs to be individually measured and hand matched. Pontus. Pontus. Emily Pontus. Something about that name resonated with me. I got the Pontus delivered to me on May 18th, 2021. Plugged it into my PC running Amazon in exclusive mode and remember feeling a massive pit in my stomach during the first listen. Absolute hot garbage. It sounded grainy and scratchy like an old broken radio. Almost immediately I sent Alvin a message to the effect and he explained that it should be left running 10 days to burn in before judging the sound quality. This turned out to be a really important bit of info. Now buying this stack was a huge leap of faith on my part. Not only was it more money than I've ever spent on such a thing, it was also not returnable or refundable. Denifrips doesn't have any sort of dealer network that you could get service from or do a demo with. So I basically bought this DAC on hype alone. After six days of nonstop streaming through the Pontus 2, I decided to check in and give it a listen. So I pick up my MPs and James Taylor's Fire and Rain was playing. The listening experience I had could only be described as tremendous. That's what I said out loud to myself. Eyes were sort of bulging out and a state of awe remained until the song's end. My system was sounding so much better and you can imagine how relieved I was at this point too. Now, 10 days of streaming had passed and the Pontus 2 basically just settled in as my go-to DAC. It sounded much better than my chip-based DACs and I freaking loved the way it looked on my desk. All of my worries were totally put to rest by this point. At the time, I was no stranger to the idea of burning things in like speakers or headphones, but I've never noticed such a huge difference that that process could make until I got this DAC. 
Another thing for you guys to keep in mind is that after turning on the DAC from standby, sound quality becomes optimal 30 minutes later. Now, are you going to notice the difference between minute one and minute 30? Honestly, I never do because the thing sounds so good from when I turn it on. And mostly I just leave the thing on all the time. So it's always optimal anyways, but just something to mention. Everything was awesome. And I had no reason or itch to upgrade that part of my sound chain. It was going to be me and Pontus 2 for life. That brings us to the unfortunate circumstances of my last video. And just a quick recap. My Pontus 2 pooched. It happened after it was moved down here in my media room. And I didn't bang it. I didn't drop it. It just would not turn on. Okay, stay calm. I unplug it. I plug it back in. It makes a click. Then it either stays on standby or a bunch of lights end up turning on and dancing around. I can't change inputs when this happens. It's basically dead to me. At least it's under warranty, I thought, right? I sent Alvin a message and that video explaining what had transpired. He gathered that it may be a problem with the DSP. He told me to unscrew the top and make sure it was firmly in place. I did and it seemed like it was. I then reach out to Vincent who handles service over at Vinshine and my next step was to box it back up and send it in for repair. But one small problem here, I'm in Canada and as of the time of this review, there are no Canadian authorized repair places. So I'm told to ship it to their guy Todd who lives in Texas and to make sure that it's insured at full value. Okay, I take it to FedEx and find out how much that's gonna cost. That's expensive. And it gets better. The quoted three day shipping delivery window somehow became two weeks and they roughed up the outer box. Luckily the inner box and the DAC itself was completely fine. So that was a bonus. During these two weeks of shipping anxiety, I still had this brand new integrated Hegel H190 and my older Gustard DAC. So I wasn't completely empty handed here. The onboard H190 DAC is nice and smooth. Nowhere close to the Pontus in sound quality though. I tried hooking up my Gustard X16 and really disliked this combo. Too much broken glass treble at the same decibel level as I was listening to the H190. It felt like just way too much information was, was getting crammed down my ears. Back to the onboard DAC while I waited for a replacement. So it's not always so obvious how much you appreciate something till it's gone. You guys like car analogies, right? Let's say you drive a really nice one. You get used to it and it just becomes a part of your life. You don't think of it as your Porsche GT3, it's just your car. You get the same consistently good experience each time you go for a spin. But hang on, now you gotta drive another car and you notice a big difference immediately. And this was my experience. So at this point, I really missed my Pontus. Later on, I explained my frustration to Vincent and being an awesome and understanding guy, he offers me an upgrade to a brand new Venus 2. I would have to pay a bit extra, but it was actually a really nice deal. So if I shell out some extra dough, I'd get the chance to experience the next level up in the Denifrips line of DAX. Curiosity gets the better of me here. I did it. I went ahead with the Venus purchase. Curiosity also had me wondering what happened to the Pontus in the first place. So I get in touch with Texas Todd and I gotta say, this guy was fun to speak with. He knows his electronics. He also loves his hi-fi. So Todd says it was in fact the DSP board that needed a replacement. When I asked him about what may have caused it, I mentioned that it was moved down to my basement right before it pooched. Now my basement gets dry here in the winter. Todd says that this may have been a factor in the DSP unit failing. He went on to explain about ESD precautions. Here's a pro tip that may actually help you guys and save you some stress in the long run. When you're handling anything audio related, always touch the case first and then the button you wanna press. 
Same thing goes if you want to plug something in the back. So I asked a friend of mine, Lawrence, who's an electrical engineer for advice. He says one thing you can do to limit static shock is have a humidifier running. This may seem obvious, but it never occurred to me at the time. Since it's in a room with lots of electronics, he says, it's best to use distilled water because it won't leave any weird residue that could also damage electronics. So I end up doing this. With all that said, I finally get my Venus 2 in the mail. Let's unbox. Okay, box one is done. Box two. They ship this so fast. I think they shipped it Friday. And today is Tuesday of the next week. So shipping gets a 10 out of 10. All right. This is what we have so far. Here we go. I'm very excited. It's still very cold. Okay. Without further ado, I give you the Venus. So excited. Yes. Look at that dedunk. Beautiful. All right. Getting this down to my layer. Need to burn it in for a week at least. So let's have a quick chat about the physical stuff and I'll start with the front. One thing I need to mention is how dead sexy the silver is. I, I love it. It's my preference for sure. Yeah, it's going to stand out way more than their black version would, especially in my setting here, but I don't care. I love it. I think it's beautiful. All right, so let's turn this thing on. Before I touch any buttons, because of ESD precautions, I always grab something metal and then touch the case and then I touch my button. So let's turn it on. That light turns off and it's on right now. It's set to coax one. In order to change inputs, you've got the input this way and then input this way. So these are like jogger buttons. So let's input here. Coax 2, optical, AES1, AES2, USB, and then of course I2S. And then to get back, you use this button. Back to coax 1. All right, so the next button is phase, self-explanatory. And then we've got oversampling and non-oversampling. Right now, there's nothing lit up, so oversampling is on. I prefer the slow filter in oversampling with the Venus 2, whereas the Pontus, I actually preferred the non-oversampling mode pretty much all the time. I'll get more into how to switch that in a little bit. And then here is mute, and we'll get more into that in a little bit as well, and the mode button. And that's it. We've got these little perforated holes. I'm not sure why they're there. It would be cool if they could put like a little infrared remote sensor so I could switch inputs from my couch. That would be nice, but nothing like that exists yet. Who knows down the road? The OS NOS button. So OS is oversampling, NOS is non-oversampling. Right now there's nothing lit above it, so oversampling is engaged. If I want to use non-oversampling, simply press the button. Done, it's on. Turn it off. Now, when in oversampling mode, there are two options. You could either use the slow filter or the sharp filter. In order to change those, it's a bit convoluted, so I wanted to do this to just simplify and make it easy for you guys to, to use, should you need it. We press mute first. Those dance around, and then we press mode. Right now, optical. So optical off, optical on. So on is slow, off is sharp. It's as simple as that. I like slow better personally, and that's usually what I leave my DAC to. Just let it be for a little while, and there we go. It's back to your normal DAC, and OS slow is now engaged. Bitrate indicators. 
as you can see, you've got 44.1K here, 48K here. Then you've got one, two, four, eight times, and then DSD, which I never see lit because I don't have anything DSD. So how it works, I'm gonna pull this up on my phone. Right now we are playing this song at CD quality. So it's 44.1 times one, CD quality. If we select another song, let's do this one. There we go. See how it switches? There we go, 48K times two. So that means it's playing at 96K. We'll do one more. Uh, April come. This is Simon and Garfunkel, so it should read 192 if I'm right. There you go, Simon and Garfunkel. It switched to 48 times four, that's 192, if you do the math. So that's how it works. Now one problem with this system <laughs> is being able to see these little numbers and these little lights from where I sit, which is you know seven to 10 feet away, it's next to impossible. You'd need binoculars or maybe if you had eagle vision, I certainly do not. Um, and yeah, that's a bit of a downfall, but I like that it shows you that the bit rates are changing and that you know that it's working and that's important to me. One thing I should mention, Pontus 2 versus Venus 2, uh, an easy way to tell without even reading this is if the power button is off to the side, that's the Pontus 2. And I don't know, this is a bit of a nitpick, but the balance always kind of bugged me versus the Venus and the Terminator, Terminator Plus. This Standby button is in the middle and everything is centered and I don't know, there's balanced. I don't know, throw your Thanos meme joke in there, but I like balance. Here's a look at the back. Analog outputs and digital inputs are the exact same on both the Pontus and Venus 2. Here you can also see how beautifully thick those brushed aluminum plates on each panel are. So when I plugged this in initially, I totally thought it was gonna suck, just like the Pontus did right off the bat. My Venus was still cold from being outside in the winter. And remember, these things need an additional 100 hours of burn-in to sound optimal. But this just wasn't the case. It sounded freaking amazing right out the gate. I started off with my go-to test track, Baby Driver, and I noticed a three-dimensionality to the sound that I did not expect to hear. I switched back to the Hegel using its network input with Apple Music, and I played the same song volume matched. Nowhere near as good as it was with the Venus. Not even close. More lively and I'm thinking to myself, this still has to break in. It, it just sounded way more analog somehow. This DAC is freaking awesome right out of the gate. I played Tom Sawyer by Rush and this was just destroying the experience that I was getting from the integrated DAC on the Hegel, which if you saw my last video was destroying the experience I was getting from my last integrated streaming amp. I just keep jumping up in sound quality and I'm loving every minute of it. I did the same A-B test with In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins and I could honestly say that I've reached what Hans Beekhausen refers to as audio nirvana. It's just that good. I'm having such a great time here. Now, how does Venus compare in sound quality to my other DACs? This is easy. It blows the ones I have at my disposal out of the water. It gives you a lot of resolution without feeling like you're being overloaded. Venus 2's instrument placement and separation is on a whole other level, while Soundstage feels both wider and deeper. Keep in mind, this is on my little CAF LS50 Metas with two subs in the room. I can't help but wonder how large floor standing speakers would sound here. It isn't as harsh like, like the Gustard X16 and manages to be more engaging and less anemic than Hegel's already decent AKM bass stack. On top of this, the Venus 2 still manages to be smooth sounding while maintaining a much more lifelike presence. All of these differences make music feel more human made and analog. This is why I love this DAC and R2R technology in general. So you may be asking yourself, how about the Pontus? Apart from standby button placement, physical dimensions are very similar on both DACs. The Venus 2 is quite a bit heavier than the Pontus 2 though. 
one kilogram to be exact. My guess is it's probably due to the beefier power supply. Both Pontus and Venus are available in the same silver or black colorways. Man, I wish I had them both here so I could properly do an A-B comparison with my headphones and my loudspeaker setup. I even asked Alvin if there was a way that they could send me the repaired Pontus back just for this comparison, but this wasn't an option. Considering the amount these things cost in shipping, I totally understood. I still feel like I can describe the difference though. According to their spec sheets, here are the internal differences. Venus has more precise resistors. Venus has a better power supply. Venus has a better crystal oscillator. And finally, Venus has a slightly better total harmonic distortion plus noise value. So if you feel the majority of the stuff went over your head, don't worry, I have no clue either. I asked Alvin over at Vinshine for some clarification and he sent me this. He explained that Venus 2 is almost on par with the original Terminator that Ron from New Record Day reviewed. I'll leave a link to this review in the description box below. He then went on in greater detail as to why. Here's a cut and paste from the email he sent me if you're interested. The Pontus 2 can be anyone's endgame deck. Plenty of folks with audio systems way higher end than mine have Pontus doing the heavy lifting and they love it. If the DSP board didn't go bad on mine, I'd be happily enjoying it, not caring about how much better I could eke out if I upgraded. Make no mistake, the Venus is definitely an upgrade though. I feel like it's everything the Pontus was with a bit more resolution, instrument separation, and focus. Once again, I feel no need to upgrade or change my DAC. Now, I feel compelled to tell you that if you're thinking about upgrading your existing chip-based DAC to a higher-end chip-based DAC, don't. Sidegrabes are pointless and expensive. Just keep it, use it, and save up for an R2R. A lot of people start with the Ares 2 in the Denifrips line and upgrade from there. From what I hear, it's a great window into the R2R world, but I haven't personally tried it, so can't personally vouch for it. In my opinion, save right up and go to the Pontus 2 or Venus 2 and just be done with it. This is called the birth of Venus. Worshipped by ancient Romans as the god of love and beauty, among other things. It's pretty fitting, right? Just like a painting that you would personally connect with, Venus 2 portrays music that stirs up emotion. It takes the ones and zeros of digital and paints them to my amp beautifully. So, there it is. I feel like my audio chain has never sounded this good. It's like listening to God. Mr. Chips? Yes? There is so much wrong with this, I don't even know where to begin. Yeah, I know. I'd like to thank you guys for making it this far. It's been a great trip. I've decided that YouTube is something that I really enjoy, so I've got a lot more stuff coming down the pipeline. If you've liked what you've seen here and want to watch more, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you know when my next video drops. Until then, enjoy your music, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, if you're still here, you may or may not have noticed an Easter egg somewhere in this film foreshadowing something big that's coming to my channel. If you've figured it out, let me know in the comments below.